Okay, uh, we need to continue to talk about it because now it's time. Uh, trouble with spotted lantern flies mm. again this year. Experts say you need to take action before they hatch. So Jen is live this morning in Malvern, Chester County, and you're going to tell us what kind of action we should be taking. Yeah, we called a lot of people in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Good morning, guys. Good morning. And then we got you guys at Shriner Plant Healthcare, and we had a couple of great conversations. Yes, we did. Saving these trees and preventing these spotted lanternflies is easier than we think, and we can all play a role. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So first of all, you don't want us looking at the trunks of the trees. You want us looking up. Not necessarily. Okay. Yes, the spotted lanternfly like to lay their eggs in the upper canopy of the trees. Okay. And if you see here, this these are egg casings that were laid last summer. Okay. And they're about 50 to 80 eggs per casing. Gross. And what we can do is just mechanically, if you will, remove the eggs by scraping them off with a credit card, putting them in a bag, and then you can use alcohol or just crush them and throw them away. Okay, let's do a little show and tell. Uh -oh. We like to show and tell on TV. A absolutely. Okay. Henry, hold the branch, please. Absolutely. And we're going to... Good. You yep. have that. And then you'll just... Put the bag underneath, get a credit card or any hard card, and just scrape yeah. scrape away. Okay. And there goes the spotted lantern fly. And we're, we're basically destroying the eggs cause, because then they can't grow into spotted lantern That's flies. That's correct. So you can see it, you want to clearly scrape all the eggs off but not damage the stem, stem of the branch. I was going to say, as a, as a friend of trees, you want yes. us using something plastic. Why is that? A exactly. So it doesn't, it doesn't mar or scrape the, the bark and okay. injure, the, injure the tree. The other places that you say you're seeing them are, in our, are on people's houses. Correct. Up in the soffit, where they'll, the insect will crawl up late summer to lay its eggs, and they'll get caught up under the gutter or the soffit, and you'll see them up there. There's not much we can do as far as scraping at that point, but if we can control what's in the landscape down low, you're definitely going to suppress the amount of insects you're going to see this year. Okay, there's a giant hose on the ground. Henry's here. There, there's another layer that you can do to tr try and help this out, right? Absolutely. So what is he prepared to do? So what Henry's going to do is what we call a soil injection into the root profile of the tree. Okay. And the material that we inject into the soil gets translocated up into the canopy of the tree. And then as the feeding insects start to feed, as they emerge, the ones that we don't scrape off, they'll ingest the material, cause them to die, and the harm is, is gone. Okay. Now, so let's say we didn't get all of the eggs off our tree. Yes. And then... Do you want us to do the thing where we put the sticky tape around the tree? So that's great. So this was this was put on last year, the sticky tape. And what that takes care of are the crawling nymphs in the first and second stage. First stage, they're black and white. Second stage, they're red, black, and white. And they crawl and they emerge up. If the sticky tape's there, they'll get caught. And it acts as a great suppressant to reduce the number of feeding insects. Okay. Non-chemical. We thought too. that like these spotter and lantern flies were going to destroy golf courses and trees and everything. And as it turns out, it, it never, that's not what happened, right? So, correct. There is a bug, real briefly, that you want us to watch out for. Yes. What's it called? The emerald ash borer, <laughs> which only attacks white ash trees. But that insect is very, very damaging. And after a year of feeding on an ash tree, the tree will die. Oh. And between six and eight months, the tree will start to break apart. So it's a real liability on clients' property. So you really want to make sure you have your trees inspected to make sure that they aren't infected with the emerald ash borer. Okay, as we wrap it up, when we talked on the phone yesterday, I thought this was the best advice you had. You can go get this stuff at like Home Depot, Lowe's, your garden store, mm -hmm. or you can hire a guy like you. Absolutely. You said it kind of depends on how many trees you have in the, your yard. The number of trees and the size of the trees. Okay. Right. So if you've got some giant trees, right. call you guys. You got it. Baby trees, yeah. take care of it yourself. You got it. Mike and Alex. Mike, I know you've been gone. I don't know where the heck you were, Yeah. but I hope you had fun. It was great. We got a new tree guy. Oh, okay? yeah. He's Isn't good. Isn't that super fun? Yeah. I mean, for a tree guy. Yes. I'm not saying like... <laughs> I'm taking you to an amusement park, right. but for tree stuff. Right, right. You're our tree guy. Oh, Thank you. Goodness. Yeah. All right. Uh, He's kind of cool. He's a great guy. He branches out in many different uh, categories. And, uh,